Bethesda has just re-enabled the vending machines, but there's a lot of new updates on the upcoming patch 20 and its contents. Also, the Fashnaf griefing is getting out of hand. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to cover a lot of spoilers, soft and heavy ones, but I will be providing a heads up in each topic, so bear with me. To start with, we just got the display cases and vending machines back online with the latest hotfix. A new legendary effect has been discovered in the PTS, and the Fashnaf griefing has been insane in the past few days. Moreover, Moreover, the legendary perk system seems to need a little bit of a rework and there is a new information about the return of the Brotherhood of Steel. Major spoilers for this one. The weather also might change in Fallout 76 until the end of the year and new skins resembling a new weapon have been discovered. Lastly, there are dozens of new items coming to the Atomic Shop and well, as part of the upcoming score system as well, which will be the new season pass for the game. Let's get into details, shall we? Around three weeks ago, Bethesda detected a new duplication glitch related to the player vending machines and display cases. As such, they decided to disable them all until they could find a fix, which makes sense, right? They took their time and 18 days later we got a hotfix to address the issue. You can now resume business, the vending machines are back online and everything seems to be working just fine. The display cases are also showing items once again, they should be loading the items you had 3 weeks ago. I checked all my display cases and again everything seems to be back to normal. However, there is a small oopsie here, there is another display bug that can show items for sale when you did not put them there for sale at all, far from it, including untradeable items like the secret agency armor. Bethesda has already commented on this bug and they asked players to please check their inventories and vending machines and reassign your items from scratch. As for the duplication glitch, I am assuming it is fixed, but I can't confirm it 100%. Let's hope that exploit is now part of the past. So, a few days ago I came across this post where a player found a new weapon in the PTS, spoiler alert here by the way, and this new named weapon comes with a brand new legendary effect, a very promising one actually. It's called Cursed and it adds improved damage and attack rate at the cost of less durability. It pretty much transforms the weapon into a glass cannon weapon. You do more damage but it breaks more often. At first sight, it looks like a great alternative to bloodied and junky weapons. Now, what we don't know yet is if this legendary effect is an exclusive to this named weapon or if it will become a generic legendary effect with patch 20. If so, then this would mean you can roll this cursed effect from any legendary drops or even from the Prevere. Well, only time will tell on this one. Alright, the Fashna event is live for a week now and things have been running relatively smoothly, at least we can complete the event now. However, players have discovered several griefs to ruin the event for everybody else or even make the event fail. Anyhow, I have been receiving dozens of messages and comments about different griefs and the most concerning ones are definitely the power armor frames, which can block the NPC trajectory and hold the event host Hostage, and there's hardly anything you can do to stop the griefers. But things are getting worse and worse. A few days ago, griefers found a way to destroy the robots with explosive bait. Yes, you heard me right. It's basically all over social media at this point. I had two players sending me footage and I tested myself. It's really easy, it just takes one explosive bait and boom, the event is ruined. The robots have no defense against this explosive for some reason. They just get deactivated or destroyed depending on the phase of the event. 
Either way, this results in a failed event and it only takes one click from a malicious player to ruin the experience for dozens of other players. I have recently shared some footage on Twitter and again I had lots of comments of people saying they experienced this grift already, so maybe next year Bethesda will address this exploit and prevent such griefing from happening again. The event is ending in about a week, so I don't think they have enough time to fix it now unless they would extend the event again, which is unlikely to happen at this point. Anyhow, it is really sad. I even saw a player asking people for caps, blackmailing them, otherwise he would kill the robots. Just why? It's difficult to understand this level of malice and trolling. I really think such people should be punished but that's just me. What do you guys think about this? Do let me know in the comments below. Well, the legendary player system is live on the PTS for testing and I had the chance to try it out already. I must say I did not get impressed with the perks to start with, but the real issue here is with the system as a player pointed out on Reddit already and while hundreds of other players seem to agree with his opinion. Basically, each normal perk card gives you one per coin and a gold card gives you five coins. Until here, everything sounds normal. The problem is that each upgrade costs hundreds of coins. Rank 1, for example, is 100 coins for all cards, it seems like. And that's insane if you think about it. You need to scrap multiple dozens of per cards just for one single upgrade. In fact, this player claims to be almost level 800 and he could only perform 3 legendary card upgrades. Now, that's really insanity in my book. It's way too grindy and it really needs a rework. I don't think it's supposed to be this grindy. I'm almost level 400 and with these calculations, I would be able to do one to two upgrades max and that's it. So yeah, I really hope Bethesda will listen to the feedback and adjust the system to the player's needs and opinions. Common sense here would also help but that's another story. Here we go again, major spoilers alert ahead, watch at your own risk. And this one is about the Brotherhood of Steel. A few weeks ago Bethesda announced their new roadmap for the rest of 2020 and two of the main features are quest lines for this faction, oh yes, Steel Dawn and then Fracture Steel. However, it seems like something is about to arrive with patch 20 already. It's some sort of short uh, comeback to the Brotherhood and data miners found lots of files and even lore. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail because this topic could easily make a full video, but basically a new character is coming with patch 20 or 21, I don't know yet, and he will follow the Brotherhood steps in Appalachia and he will find some interesting things about them. He will then get in touch with the paladin who is conducting a mission and that's where players start to get involved. This faction wants to help the people of Appalachia but first they need a new base which seems to be the Atlas Observatory which is kind of abandoned at this very moment. It will be reworked just like Spruce Knob became the foundation and the crashed space station became the crater. Now I'm not sure if this data mine lore is part of the upcoming quests already or another quest that hasn't been revealed to us yet. But there's a lot of details, including tasks that players must do, possible rewards and so much more. In fact, it seems like dialogue option trees will be available as well. In the end, one thing is for sure, the Brotherhood is returning for good and we are getting plenty of content in the following months, so stay tuned for more updates. Following this Brotherhood leak, it seems like the weather might change in the near future. More spoilers ahead, as obvious, and one of the data mined parts states that this faction will use the Atlas Observatory to freeze the Scorch Beasts away. Now, what could this mean? Hmm? 
Well, some Reddit users already got the message and it feels like the Brotherhood will use ice or snow to slow down the beasts, something like the cryolator effect. Maybe they will build new weapons using this system or maybe the weather will slightly change. Since the observatory was made with the intention to kinda control the weather in the region. So maybe they will find out how to decrease the temperature and make it snow, 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 snow. It wouldn't surprise me since we already have the ash effect falling off the sky in the toxic valley, which kinda looks like snow already, so they can easily use this effect to make it look like snow. Anyhow, both ideas sound amazing and exciting. So one or the other, I am sure players will be pretty happy with it. Something really interesting that has been data mined as well is a skin that resembles the iconic service rifle in Fallout New Vegas. At first, I thought they found the new weapon in the game files, but it seems like it's just a skin for the handmade. But this is like an epic skin, since it will make your hand make look completely different. There are three skins so far, as you can see, a wood, a camo and a backlight as well. Anyway, the concept is in Fallout 76 already, so maybe in the future this weapon will become a reality. At least the model is live already, so who knows what the future holds. Have you ever wondered why can't you cook using purified water? Most of us have the devices and drink this water all day long. However, you can only collect dirty water, waste wood to boil it and then yes, you can cook your favorite dishes. It doesn't make sense at all, but hey, we can at least try to change the system, right? I have seen this suggestion several times in the past month or so, and I finally decided to feature it here because first, it makes a lot of sense, like a lot of sense. Secondly, it would make our lives easier, and third, purified water is much better and efficient to cook with than freaking dirty boiled water. Come on, why can't we just use both? I'm sure that's not a difficult thing to enable in the game settings, or is it now? Hmm. Well, meanwhile, one can keep hoping and trying. Alright, as you surely know by now, Bethesda is bringing the season system very soon. It's a season pass system with dozens of rewards, most of them will be skins, cosmetics and camp items. Last week, all the rewards were data mined and oh boy, there are a lot of things. I even had to remove some footage because it was way too much for one news video. As you can see, we have lots and lots of power armor skins, including the highly anticipated Cosmos white and black versions. You will get plenty of ways to look unique inside your power armor, that's for sure. There are also some awesome and colorful weapon skins and tons of camo ghillie skins for all types of armors. Bethesda wants to make sure you can blend in perfectly in the forest area for some reason. Imagine how much you will stand out in the cranberry bog with that greeny look or in the toxic valley, for example, where everything is, you know, sandy and it's basically a desert. Anyway, they do look decent and very different from all the armor skins we got so far. Moving on, we are getting some new photo mode poses, a new space backpack skin with a monkey this time, not a cat, and some more outfits like Power Rangers in blue, green and pink. Bring the space domination. Oh yeah. We also got exciting camp items such as galaxy lights, which look very promising by the way. I really want one of these when they come live. Other highlights include the firefly jar, which works like a small lamp, a hanging glowing branch, a skeleton figure, and a Henry. We are getting chickens. Damn right, let's cook some more. <clears throat> Never mind. Oh, and you can exercise better, keep that fitness in check while staying at home. Overall, there's plenty of new items coming, but don't forget the season's pass will last around two months and most of the rewards will require some grinding, to say the least. 
Since we are in the spirit of new data mine items, here's some more coming to the Atomic Shop. These are not score rewards, by the way. We have new Under Armors in different colors, at least they look like that. They could also be outfits, but I doubt that. They look pretty badass though. There's a new Bow and Pip Boy skins coming too, and a new cooking station, which looks rather different and basic. Well, it surely does the job, so it's fine. The duck's lamp got me hard, it looks really, really cute, I must confess. Anyway, we are also getting new wood wall paints for that rustic and country look, which kind of looks amazing in the wasteland and anywhere in the world, really. I mean, in real life. Lastly, we are getting a Sheep Squatch Animal Mounted Head, its horns too, and some new player icons, some featuring the Wendigo Colossus. I can't wait until they increase the camp budget, because there's so many new items coming and so little space. Ay 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 caramba! I couldn't tell us too much yet, but I'm really hoping we are not getting back to stage 0 with the vending machine and drinking bowl bugs, where players could basically steal your stash items randomly through that bug. From what I saw, things are not looking pretty, last time it all started with a display bug as well. Anyway, I am Martin Branco, thank you so much for watching, I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. Don't forget, new content is live on the PTS for testing, and well, I will see you all very very soon! Don't forget to comment, leave a like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video. You can also support me even further if you want, the links are always below the video. Now you guys and girls, take care, until next time! Adios, bye bye!